Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the official start of the week post Labor Day. I'm Kiri Masters, one of your hosts for today's webinar. And uh, we're, we're going to get started in a couple of minutes because um, we're waiting on people to finalize their registrations and come through the door. So a big welcome today. Um, this is the second webinar that we've, um, public webinar that we've done at Bobsled Marketing. We do internal client exclusive webinars as well, but um, this is the first time that we're focusing on a specific category on Amazon. And I think it's going to be really helpful because um, brands in the beauty space have unique selling challenges and opportunities with Amazon, which is what we're going to talk about today. And there's lots of there's lots of uh, really positive elements of selling on Amazon as a beauty brand, like the gated cat subcategories that we're going to talk about. And then there's there's challenges with this particular category on Amazon too that don't um, that aren't as concerning in other categories, but are concerning for beauty brands. So we're going to cover off all of that on today's webinar. The first webinar that we did a, uh, a few weeks back was about the vendor seller hybrid model of selling on Amazon. And that was very well received from brands that uh, have a traditional wholesale selling relationship with Amazon and are looking for a little bit more uh, ultimately flexibility and um and brand protection opportunities by becoming a marketplace seller. And we got such great, great feedback on that webinar that we decided to, to look into a category specific one, which is what we're doing today. So um, we have 25 folks on the, on the call now. I think that we may as well go ahead and get started and, and folks are going to continue to come in. Um, I'll give a, a little bit of background about Bobsled Marketing in case you're not familiar with the company. So Bobsled Marketing is an Amazon-focused digital agency. We uh, are headquartered in New York, but we're a fully remote team with um, our team members all around the US and in Europe as well. Um, Bobsled was started in 2015 by myself. And today we have 25 team members, a, handful, a couple of ex-Amazonians uh, representing over 40 brands in the US, Europe and Australia. We work with sellers, vendors across all different product categories, including beauty, obviously. And our relationship with Amazon is that we're a, a member of their official solution provider network. We are an AMS partner and we're certified with the Amazon Media Group, which is their programmatic display advertising um, feature and a couple of times a week I post articles on Forbes.com about Amazon which is a lot of fun. As I mentioned we work across um, all of Amazon's selling categories but we have a strong contingent of beauty brands and we really love this space so here's a few brands that we uh, currently work with or have worked with in the past. And today, I'm not uh, flying solo today. I have a co-host today, Jen Hoser, who's a, a client project manager at Bobsled and um, very familiar with the beauty space. But a little bit of background on me in case you're not familiar with who I am. I'm Kiri Masters, the founder and CEO of Bobsled. I started the company back in 2015 after a um, seemingly uh, completely unrelated uh career in commercial banking at JP Morgan Chase and it was during my banking career that I um, started an e-commerce business on the side in the crafts and DIY category and eventually launched those products on Amazon and along the way at, at that point in time back in 2013-2014 there was not a whole lot of information about how to do this kind of stuff. There was no bobsled marketing blog <laughs> showing me 
what to do, how to how to protect the brand, how to launch products, how to run promotions, what PPC was all about. So I really learned about Amazon drinking from the fire hose there. And I left my banking career when I started to see the the groundswell around Amazon and how much consumer product brands needed help to navigate it because Amazon uh, even at even back in 2015 was pulling back from offering support to brands directly and that's the gap that we really fill at bobsled is um, that human interaction with brands who who need help navigating the features who need help navigating the bugs so um, that was seemed to be such a great need and the context of starting bobsled marketing so today i head up bobsled as the ceo i also co-host a podcast called the e-commerce brain trust and uh yeah write a weekly column on forbes.com about amazon so i'll pass over to jen to give a little of her professional background and how she came to be at bobsled thanks carrie hi everybody um, it's first of all, it's so great to be here um, in this Amazon world that we're all living in these days. Um, so a little bit on me. I had a former career in entertainment with uh, NBC Universal and the Ellen DeGeneres show, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I was doing a lot of PR and digital advertising um, in my capacity with entertainment. Um, and then after about 13, 14 years, I decided to go out on my own and really focus on marketing and branding in the e-commerce space just out of personal interest. I just found it fascinating. So I became a marketing and branding consultant for clients that were manufacturing their own consumer products. Um, and along that way, I discovered the huge potential in Amazon as a distribution channel. And as I was investigating it for my clients, I got interested in it and um, figured the best way to learn it was to start my own FBA business on Amazon, which Carrie always mentions, you know, drinking from the fire hose. That's absolutely the experience, especially when you have, when you put your own money into it and, and you're learning things as you go. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting. And there was always something new to learn. Um, But it was the best way to really learn how to be successful on the platform was to actually put some skin in the game and and try it and do it. Um, And I've worked with beauty brands uh, for a few years before joining Bobsled as some of my private clients. Um, Many of them were independent startups and they've gone on to really great market success from here where they've been, some have been bought out by major brands and others are still going strong as independents. And um, I'm thrilled to be working in this category at Bobsled. I've got three really successful independent beauty brands that have offerings from personal grooming for men and women to anti-aging and obviously the, also the natural and organic skincare approach, which is so important these days and is being talked about in just about every talk show and book that you find at, uh, on Amazon. So thrilled to be here and, and talk about this. Thanks for that, Jen. And it's really great to have you on board with your seller, you know, uh, direct selling experience um, as well as consulting. So um, definitely have a lot of value to add here with your um, beauty category expertise also. So just moving on to housekeeping. So um, this is going to be an interactive webinar webinar. where if you have questions, I can see a couple of people mentioning about the uh, audio skipping. Sorry about that. We're going to look into that while we're on the call. Um, But we will be recording this webinar and it will be available to to rewatch on demand um, along with um, the slides. So if we continue to have issues here, we're going to um, we're going to keep going moving forward and the replay will be available. Okay. So moving on to the agenda for today. So this is um, this is a, a broad sweep of the beauty category. We're going to be talking about trends that have um, that have emerged on Amazon in the beauty category. Part of that is these new gated subcategories and Amazon um, demonstrating that they're really doubling down on this category through these uh, gated subcategories that uh, Jen is going to get into more detail on. 
because we've got kind of a mix of experience of um, of folks who joined up for the webinar on the call, some established on Amazon already and some are brand new to Amazon. So we're going to be covering off strategies for both. And finally, since we're coming up to Q4 uh, real soon, <laughs> we're going to be talking about beauty category tips for Q4 and just summarizing with elements of a successful beauty channel on Amazon as well. So to lay a bit of the groundwork for today, just wanted to talk about some macro level trends. And Jen, I think you'll agree that we've seen Amazon really demonstrating its intent to continue moving into the beauty space. They've become very aggressive here and um, in, in approaching brands to sell on Amazon and, um, and beefing up their presence here. So right now we're looking at 2018 estimates of Amazon's um, sales share. Oh, sorry. They, these are actual um, from the Q2 period as well as what is projected to be the the market share of of, uh, of Amazon in the beauty space. So Jen, can you, can you walk us through a couple of the trends here and, and what we're seeing um, Amazon doing in the beauty category? Yes. And um, I, th I think we're absolutely going to continue to see this strong growth in beauty. Um, as you mentioned, Amazon is focused on it and uh, and what they focus on usually happens. Um, you know, beauty is currently the third fastest growing category um, after food and beverage and apparel and accessories. And if we look at the data here on the slide, Overall, Amazon sales in health and personal care and beauty is going to reach $16 billion in 2018, um, which is nearly a 40% wow. increase over last year, which is pretty remarkable. Um, mm. And if you break that down into the second quarter sales for just health and personal care, they hit $1.9 billion. And, and out of that, the beauty category alone represented $950 million of it, which was a 26% increase. So what they're doing is definitely moving the needle. Um, mm -hmm. And if you, if you break that down even further and look at the luxury beauty niche, that experienced the biggest gains, which was $250 million in sales and almost a 60% increase. So we mm -hmm. can't deny the rapid growth um, mm -hmm. and what we're looking at into 2019 and beyond. They've definitely put their stake in the ground and, and they're delivering audience for these luxury brands. Um, you know, in the past- So what kind of brands would be it included in that luxury beauty carve out? Luxury beauty is gonna be what you see uh, when you go into a, a high-end store. So your, your Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, things like that. So you're looking at, you know, Elizabeth Arden and Philosophy, um, those types of brands that people are very, very familiar with and are usually sold in a high-end high end store. So, um, you know, in the past, Amazon was pretty much the source for kind of the cult French pharmacy stuff and Korean brands that you couldn't really find here that uh, were driven by influencers and definitely on trend. But they really want to compete with the Ultas and Sephoras of the world. Um, and the way they're doing that is through these yeah. subgated categories. So, right. um, you know, and as I said before, it's historically Amazon doesn't dedicate any resources to trends they don't believe are going to be a, a huge success for them. So these three subcategories are, are clearly a path to future growth for that. Yeah, that's a great point about Amazon, you know, they, selecting the categories that they want to go really hard into. And I remember pre Whole Foods acquisition, Amazon made a big push into the grocery category. They released their own private label brands like Wickedly Prime and um, I forget the, the other ones. They have a handful of private label brands that they launched before the Whole Foods acquisition. They also gave um, grocery brands a discount on selling fees in this category in order to promote more brands launching um, new products there and and getting more selection on the platform. So if we, I'm not, I'm not suggesting Amazon's going to go out and acquire a, a beauty retailer right now, but we have seen um, Amazon push aggressively into categories previously and and be very successful um, in in that effort. Yes, yes, for sure. 
So um, just a, a noticing a, a few comments in the chat here. If the, if you're experiencing audio issues besides the construction noise in the background on, on my end, um, try refreshing the page and that seems to have fixed the issues for a few people. Um, and also just a reminder, if you have questions as we go along, just pop them in the chat box and we'll be checking those periodically too. Okay, so moving on to our next slide here, Jen mentioned these gated subcategories. So, uh, Jen, just you know, in addition to the, what's we've got on the slide here, can you tell us a little bit about these gated subcategories and what it means to be gated in in general as well? Yeah, and you know, first it's important to note the you know the success that the brands are having in these categories. Um, just to, so everyone knows, these were really slow to to take initially. So just to add on to that previous growth, um, the fact that this has happened so quickly uh, in just a little over a year is, is definitely something we want to comment on. So, um, and yeah, they've, they've made a lot of changes. So beauty overall was ungated. Um, And then with these subcategories, um, it just makes it a little more elite and, you know, a a gated category on Amazon, just in case people are aware or, or familiar with that. Um, it allows brands and manufacturers to really control who can sell their products on Amazon. And because of that, it, it blocks anybody who's unauthorized from selling that. So in the past, you know, there's been issues with high end things on Amazon being counterfeit or not the real deal. So this definitely is giving buyers on Amazon a comfort level uh, within these categories that they are getting the real, the real product. So, mm. um, so the, the first subcategory would be professional, and and I know sometimes professional and luxury gets the lines get blurred, but um, professional is are products that you're going to find at you know salons and dermatology offices. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with Lancer, who's a Dr. Lancer, who's a major plastic surgeon um, and dermatologist here in Beverly Hills, and it used to be you couldn't get his products unless you went to his office, which I personally have done and had to make sure that I had enough for my mortgage to pay for it. So he's actually, <laughs> he's actually created his own line for Amazon. So wow. he's, yeah. So, and it looks like he's done it with Ryan Seacrest. So we both know both of those guys don't invest things, invest things that aren't going to be successful. So just mm-hmm. a little tip there. Um, but so like products like Obagi, Skin Medica, those are the things that you're going to find in professional beauty. Um, and then luxury mm-hmm. beauty, that's going to cover again those high-end identifiable brands like Burberry, Le Occitane, Dermalogica, um, those brands that you find at upscale department stores, um, as well as their own brick-and-mortar stores. Um, and then Indie Beauty is made up of brands that are independently owned and not stocked by major retailers like the Ultas and Sephoras, um, but are really, really growing in the space. Okay, and so um, it it seems like. A great move because of the brand protection elements to get into one of these gated subcategories so you have a, a less of a chance of of getting knockoffs or unauthorized sellers tell us a little bit more about that and then also what the process is to join yeah so you know to get into a gated category amazon is looking for brands that they've that they have determined as a good fit for these subcategories mm. um and so it is a kind of an invitation uh, situation at this point, but there are things that you can do to kind of increase that likelihood to get an invitation from Amazon. Uh, we, Bobsled actually published a white paper on that that we could probably um, include uh, to everyone to make sure that they've got mm. that. Um, and then, so the number one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your product claims are accurate and honest. Um, in this space, shoppers spend a lot of money on beauty products. Um, and if, and if they're not satisfied with the results, they won't hesitate to leave a bad review. So on the opposite end, if the product delivers on its claims, those reviews are going to increase your sales and, and grow your brand on Amazon. So that's, that's one of the things they're looking for. You also have to be able to looking for reviews from customers. Yes. Yes. Reviews as we know on Amazon is, is key. And, uh, so one of the questions from um, Georgiana in the comments is, can you launch directly into a subcategory? 
Well, it seems like what you're saying is you need to have a little bit of um, tenure on Amazon first. Right, right. So if you look at the brands that are on there, they all have a track record. But from what I've experienced, um, as we kind of contact people we know at Amazon and, and working with, with other brands, those invitations are going out more readily as they're identifying. Right. So um, you can definitely petition Amazon to, to be in right. that in, to, to get into that category. And I've also heard from from larger brands where Amazon, or larger or more exclusive brands where Amazon really has their eye on that company and they really want to carry them, that Amazon will be reaching out to them and um, and uh, sort of getting down on a knee to, yes. <laughs> to bring them onto the platform. So I, I think it goes both ways. You can either be on Amazon being successful and then and find an invite or petition them as you said as well right right or you could be invited by amazon and it's generally a good move um to to take them up on that because you get brand protection privileges that regular brands just don't don't have access to absolutely and we have you know a Mm. couple of our clients uh bobsled have gotten invitations uh to indie beauty um and they've already been selling on amazon so obviously that's a that's a huge key to the to getting into these subcategories. Um, okay. So yeah. Right. And so in, to increase the likelihood of an invitation or to increase the likelihood of um, getting a positive response if you reach out to them, what can brands be doing here? Um, so you want to, I mean, I think brand story is, is becoming more and more important. Um, Amazon wants diversity. They want something that they're, Customers, their seller buyers can connect to. Um, your packaging design is very important, uh, regardless of the category. I mean, obviously for luxury, um, you know, you want it to have a luxurious feel. But we're finding anybody who's putting packaging together for any of these categories is is paramount. Um, okay. And absolutely, you want to know your target market. Um, mm. You absolutely want to know what niche your products serve. Make sure you've researched where your products fall and and really kind of understand the triggers for your buyers, what they're looking mm. for with what you're offering, especially in indie beauty. You know, people are passionate about what they're creating and mm. um, they're creating something specifically for a certain um, for a certain need or skincare or men's grooming is, is big. So, you know, you want to know that audience for sure uh, strongly and, and know how your presence on Amazon will will come across. And then, you know, of course, if you're already selling on Amazon, you want to leverage the advertising and, and everything that's available to you, like your storefront and your reviews and making sure your, your customer service and, and everything's on, on point. Okay. So in, in the absence of an invitation from Amazon, you want to be doing everything that you can on Amazon to, to drive traction. And then you add add a better chance of getting an invitation from them. Yes. And I would, I would, I'd go actually even further too and make sure if you've got external websites and things like that, they're looking at that too. So. Of course. Yep. Okay. Well, let's move on to, to strategies for success. And on this slide here, we're sort of comparing um, what are the critical elements between new to Amazon brands and established on Amazon brands. We're going to get into it some of these in a bit more detail later on. But I noticed that a lot of the same bullet points are, are, are familiar between new and established brands on Amazon. Can you tell us tell us a little bit about why that is? Well, you know, first of all, your strategies should should vary based on the length of time that you've been on Amazon. For those that have been on there, you know, a lot of these things are similar. Um, but in terms of where we recommend our clients focus, for example, you know, whether they're Amazon veterans um, is again back to that brand story. So all of that you can see that's number one in both lists. Um, but overall, the approach is different, um, and we can kind of talk about those strategies specific to new to Amazon sellers. Um, uh, once you've got your brand story established, you know you really how does it appeal to your customer base? This is how a seller differentiates themselves on from the competition. And where they stand apart in their in their message. Um, also, external marketing is so important these days, and Amazon's giving us more and more tools to measure um, outside traffic that's coming to their listings. So, 
If your brand already exists outside of Amazon, you want to make sure that that external marketing is in place with social media, email, even if you're part of brick and mortar, you've got your product in, in shops. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to just depend on um, your storefront when you launch on Amazon. Of course. Yeah, and I think for, for the most part, um, certainly at Bobsled, we're, we're generally we're talking with established brands who have a, um, a really strong retail channel or a strong direct-to-consumer channel through their website, and Amazon is is the missing link, and um, they, they appreciate the benefits Amazon brings with repurchasing behavior, for example. And there's a great uh, study of 6,000 consumers that came out recently from sales force and um, publicists around um, what channels people prefer to to try products for the first time versus repurchase and they found that 50 nearly 50 percent of consumers prefer to buy a product for the first time in a retail store so a department store or some other kind of retailer and then to repurchase that product um, the purchase behavior switches where they're much more um, likely to repurchase that same product on a marketplace like Amazon as opposed to going back to that retailer and purchasing it again. Right, so right. I think the, the smart brands recognize that look, maybe Amazon isn't our discovery platform. People go to Amazon and they're searching for products with keywords. They're not going there to necessarily discover a new brand. And the discovery is really happening at the retailer through influences, through subscription boxes like Ipsy and Birchbox and the like, through other channels. And then the actual purchasing activity is happening on Amazon. So the smart brands are looking at that um, landscape and, and understanding, okay, we, we do need to invest um, in other channels for discovery. But when it comes to the actual purchasing behavior, we need to be on Amazon. We need to make that experience as easy for people as possible. Absolutely. And that, and, I mean, it makes sense, right? It's we engage all of our senses when we're in a retail store and we're touching, feeling, smelling. Um, mm -hmm. So especially for this category, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's important. And, and that's, and that's why you want your listings to be touching as many senses as possible through the screen. Um, mm. So that's, you know, for people that are new to Amazon, you know, that fact is really important because you want to consider that, you know, um, I think, mm. I think also the fact that Amazon has such a, a pretty easy return policy, you know, they def definitely support their, yeah. their buyers. Um, <laughs> I'm finding more and more people are trying things on Amazon, knowing that that, that can happen. So it's uh, it's 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 a really good piece of information to understand when you're putting your listing together. You have to appeal to everything, and and that's why reviews are so important, right? So, you know, you may not have a salesperson across the counter uh, sharing something with you, or somebody else, you know, in the store saying how much they like it. it. You've got all these reviews of of people that have tried a product, and it might make people more, um, it might make them more easy at trying something new. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point and something I I bring up quite frequently for brands that have that are active uh in in retail channels and even direct to consumer is that just because you're not actively selling your brand on Amazon doesn't mean that someone else isn't. And right. it's become um it's become a pretty thriving cottage industry of um either distributors themselves or uh resellers who are are latching onto your distribution um, network somehow and, and obtaining products from distributors or even just on an individual level, people picking up products in the clearance aisle at Walmart or Target or wherever your products are and selling them on Amazon. And that presents, we, we touched on brand protection really briefly before, but just to give a little bit more context for those that are not familiar with it, when someone else is selling your product on Amazon, that means you don't have control over how it's presented and you know presenting it in the best possible way for sales and brand integrity and um and you know talking about features and benefits and ingredients correctly so it's you know a lost opportunity there but then also there's a lot of risk involved that the customer might be getting a out-of-date product or 
shipped the wrong product. And c- shoppers don't don't recognize the difference between a third party seller and the actual brand a lot of the time. Most people don't understand really how Amazon works. To them, it's just I bought this product from this brand and it's out of date and I'm going to leave a bad review. And so unless you're actually in control of your brand on Amazon, that means you you could potentially have a, you know, your brand integrity being eroded through not and not even be aware of it. Right. Yeah, you can't. There's no controlling of your message and your product. Yeah. And that's where these gated categories really help. So that to the to the point around established on Amazon, gated categories help with that brand protection element, but you have to be active on the channel first to begin with at a minimum. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Chicken and the egg. Great. Great. Yeah. Anything else you want to add here that's, um, you know, particularly relevant to either established brands on Amazon or new to Amazon uh, in addition to what we're going to cover off in the next couple of slides, Jen? No, I think that's it. I mean, I think it's what you just touched on is is so important. So you you whether you look at Amazon as a potential for more revenue, which it absolutely mm. is. It is absolutely a way to protect your brand. Yeah. Yeah. And just to call out one more thing, we, I think we, we touch on it a little later as well, but for the established on Amazon brands, inventory sustainability becomes even more important. And, in, you know, it, it should become easier as well because you have purchase patterns to look back on. You start building up a little bit of experience in the channel and you know what, what, uh, shopping patterns to expect when and there's you know inventory is one of those foundational things if you don't have that sorted out it means your ads aren't running it means your products aren't showing up in search you know it's not even there for, for purchase essentially so this is one thing that um, particularly coming up to Q4 is going to be a big focus for bobsled working with our, our brands in every category uh, really but um, that's one thing that is you know, not the sexiest topic to talk about, but it's probably the the most important when we're talking about um, sales. Right, right. Especially for the indie category, people that are manufacturing their own. You know, you have mm. to you have to stay on top of that um, mm-hmm. because you want to make sure you have that in your back pocket. There's you can run into issues with get, not getting ingredients and things like that. So I always yeah. with, with especially with indie inventory is it's important across the board, but indie is super important for the smaller manufacturer. Right, because it can be a little more challenging. Right. Okay, well, one thing that you've really focused on um, in in this category, Jen, is telling the brand story. And I want to just uh, dwell on this a little bit longer because it's important, as you mentioned, both for new and experienced brands to, to share their brand story. And this here is an example of a brand that places a very strong focus on their brand story. This is Instant Natural. And they're not a client, but they are um, an Amazon first brand. So this is a brand that launched on Amazon before any other channel. And I think studying these types of brands can be very helpful because um, this is a this is a company that that started on Amazon, Amazon native. So um, they really know what they're doing on the platform and have um, started selling on other channels as well. So I think we can learn a lot from from them. So Jen, in what ways are we seeing Instant Natural highlight their brand story? And, and what are we looking at <laughs> first um, on this slide here? Yeah, for I mean, for me as a marketing and branding person, you know, I, I always do a quick scan and, you know, when just overall, when you look at their page, it, it screams natural. And this is a storefront. Yes. This is a yes. storefront Store. as opposed to a product page. Yep. 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 Yeah. Sorry. So it's, you know, by, you know, instantly it looks professional. It looks clean. Mm. You know, their brand is instant natural. There's a lot of white space. It's very clean. Um, so again, you want to attack all of those five senses for somebody who's looking at this on screen and you see in their titles, um, you know, the first things that jump out are vitamin C age defying, you know, toners, things that people are looking at buzzwords. And then just, you know, having a video, you know, that's the first thing that we notice. Um, we all know the power of 
video these days, whether it's influencer or just something on your Instagram. Um, they've got testimony of a, a leading esthetician right on their storefront. So that's a powerful way to convey your message from an expert in the field. Um, and the placement is is perfect right at the top. It's going to be above the fold and see where people are going to click on that before they're going to read. People are always going to click and watch before they're going to scroll and read. Um, these videos add a lot of value because you learn so much more about the product than what you can put on the page. Um, and it feels more like a conversation instead of an advertisement mm. for their product. So you're, you're connecting with your audience. Um, yep. Yep. And by utilizing some of the boxes, that's not just a product, you know, they have a picture of orange. I mean, it's fresh, it's clean, it looks delicious. Um, so vitamin C. <laughs> it's vitamin C. So you yep, just yep. from an image, you know, instantly what they're what they're using and what they're putting into their products and kind of what their angle is. And, um, and they do a great job of conveying, you know, kind of about, about the fact that their brand is all about building safe and effective formulas. And they've really identified their niche, um, which is age defying skin clearing, um, and how that's going to benefit their customers. So buyers are faced with hundreds of choices on Amazon, as we know. So any way that you can find that connection with the audience, you know, you want to connect with, um, makes that buying decision so much easier for their, for their buyer. Definitely. Well, let's move on to, so that was a storefront that we were looking at for instant natural where we we're able to see their entire product catalog. And that's a, a template that you need to set up in, um, in Amazon on Vendor Central or Seller Central. Let's look at one of their actual product pages. So this is a hyaluronic acid serum. And particularly here, I'm, I'm noticing that images that they've selected are different to what we see a lot of on Amazon. So talk us through what their strategy is here, Jen, with the images that they've selected. Well, I mean, first of all, what I love is the fact that you actually see people using the product. So, um, mm. you know, and the people that are using it have great skin. Um, it's, it's very white space, a lot of white space, again, conveying that, that clean, um, kind of image, but they've also done a great job. You know, a lot of people just put up product shots. Um, so when you see somebody using a product, they also have a picture of the actual product, even though it's white on white, you get a sense of the viscosity of it, the color, um, again, appealing to those senses. And then with images, you know, by they've got one image that's dedicated to their brand story. Yet again, it's made without all those chemicals that people are trying to avoid. Um, and it's their standard. So there's so much communicated with just images in this that um, it makes it, again, super easy to make a buying decision. And even their title with organic, pure, um, and all the things that it, that it um, treats, dry skin, wrinkles, fine lines, eye bags. I mean, uh, that would, I would buy this product just from looking at the listing. And, you know, it's, I think images not only show people enjoying the product, um, but the fact that it looks healthy, their skin looks healthy. Um, and it's all tied in together with, with the images and kind of gives you a feel for what this product delivers. It looks professional, it looks luxurious. Hey, Jen. Oh, sorry. I had muted myself. <laughs> um, yeah, so I th that's a really great point. And the, the first image that we're looking on um, this slide here, the main image, this is pretty typical of most how we see most products displayed on Amazon. And that's because there are um, there are requirements from Amazon that um, you need to have the product set on a white background outside of its packaging. It's pretty, pretty um, direct. Uh, requirements there so they have that image but then like Jen said they have the product on you know out of the bottle is that second one that we're showing there and that it's trying to uh, replicate the in-store experience when you 
um, testing a product, taking it out of the bottle, seeing what it looks like on your skin. Um, and then they're also using some um, some of their image slots to talk about the features and benefits of the product. So made without parabens, mineral oil, formaldehyde, things like that. Uh, let's move on to a, a couple of other things that this company is doing really well on this product. And this is around um, beyond optimizing the product display page for conversions with content and images, there's still lots of promotional tools that Amazon offers to both sellers and vendors. So these can be a little bit overwhelming when you're looking at all the options. There's, there's lightning deals, discounts, deal of the day, coupons. But I want to talk about just two promotional tools that can be particularly effective for beauty brands. One that this product is using is coupons. And so these are percentage off or dollar value off coupons that are great for visibility of promotions because as you can see on this page, Amazon displays that coupon in a bright green neon box. <laughs> so you can't, you can't miss it. And so it's a lot more visible than other promotional options. And it also shows up in sponsored product ad placements and in organic search results as well. So if someone is searching for hyaluronic acid serum and they have the the search results show up instant naturals option is going to show up with that coupon displaying so people are much more likely to click through to that product because they can see oh i can get five percent off this product um so jen do you have anything to add in, in your experience with working with clients with the effectiveness of of coupons yes i love 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 coupons so, I mean, who doesn't? But they seem to convert really, really well on Amazon, especially in this category. Um, it's been one of the most successful methods of promotions for my clients. Um, and, and it's not just the typical money off offer, but they've gotten really savvy and um, we're utilizing them with special offers to repeat customers. So you've already got somebody who likes your product. Um, so we're doing, you know, buy one, gift one, or, you know, buy one and get money off their next one. Um, really encouraging, encouraging that reorder. And then also using somebody who is also loyal to your brand as a repeat customer to try your new products. So, um, mm -hmm. we, we use those, those products that they buy over and over again and say, Hey, you know, we've got something new and we're going to give you a discount to, to try this new yep. product. And yep. Hey, by the way, we'd love to know how you, you know, how you like it. So also yeah, yeah. encouraging that review. Um, so, you know, you, it's all of this backed by your, you know, a sound promotional strategy and um, a targeted mm -hmm. approach. You know, it's like you can, you can absolutely blanket it. You can do money off coupons, but you can also do kind of these targeted, um, more specific kind of campaigns. And I've seen people spend, you know, 150 to $200, you know, on a coupon promotion and they're generating three to five plus times that amount in sales. So mm. it's, uh, it's definitely, I love it for launching and I love it around holidays and just special promotions, um, seasonality. Yeah. I love that. Um, the, the buy one, get one option that you mentioned as well, because that also increases your chance of that product being populated with the, this product is also bought with. So if you can get a cream, a moisturizing cream and a cleanser, shown together on a page then that's going to increase your um the likelihood of those products being seen by more customers together added to the same cart that helps with your um, average order value helps with profitability because you're only paying one order management order handling fee from amazon so so many benefits from running that type of promotion thanks for mentioning that um, the other thing I wanted to highlight on on this page is that this product is enrolled in Amazon's subscribe and save program. And so subscriptions make so much sense for Amazon. That's recurring revenue. It's also recurring revenue for the brand. So if you get your products um, ordered as a subscription where a customer has uh, agreed to get a, uh, a reorder of that every month or quarter or on whatever basis, then that's recurring revenue for you as a brand as well. And this in the beauty category where most products are replenishable and people are going to be need to reorder it in a month or three or a week or whatever it is, this is just a no brainer. I mean, 
the the price you pay here as a vendor or a seller is you you fund that discount that the customer gets of between five and fifteen percent for the subscription. But you think about you know that customer is going to definitely get your product again next month. They don't have to think about going back to your page, adding it to cart, checking out again. The chances of you actually retaining that customer if they weren't on a subscription are lower than if they were. So to me, the math usually checks out because of the almost guaranteed revenue that you're going to get from that. Um, and it, even better news in the beauty category, this promotion has been going on for almost a year now, but up until December 7th this year, uh, Amazon's offering a discount off their FBA or fulfilled by Amazon fees to sellers in this in the beauty category for brands that um, have products enrolled where customers are, are um, s- subscribing to those products. So in the in the notes that we send around uh, around after the webinar, uh, we'll include a little bit more detail there. But this actually manages to offset some of that discount for the subscription program. It's so great, so smart. Yeah, I mean, it's smart for Amazon, it's smart for brands. Customers love it as well because it means I don't have to think about when, you know, to reorder my cleanser or or whatever it is, my lipstick. Moving on to, um, and we've only got 15 minutes or so left, we will keep continue answering questions as we go along, so please um, add those in. I want to talk about PPC for a second, and uh, it seems like... Uh, any brand I talk to in any category says how competitive it is on Amazon, that they're fighting for market share, they're fighting for attention, um, it keeps getting more competitive. I agree with that assessment across the board, but you know what? Beauty is actually more competitive than some other categories. And what we're looking at here in this chart, and this is data from Amazon that we uh, receive as a partner for, uh, partner with their of their AMS division, so we're looking at the past, third, and this is for June, the period of June, um, 30-day return on ad spend for beauty versus home and outdoor. And what the, these figures mean is that for every dollar spent on advertising in the beauty category, you'll get $2.80 back in sales, a return of, of 1 to 2.8. In other categories like home and outdoor, we're talking about a return of five or six times whatever you spend on advertising. So the return on ad spend in beauty uh, is 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 less than home and outdoor. And also what you're paying for those clicks is higher than other categories. So in beauty and even more so in luxury beauty, you're paying on average um, $1.14 per click or $1.37 per click. Uh, compared with home and outdoor where you're spending 60 or 70 cents per click. So yes, be- beauty from an advertising standpoint is is more competitive. So with that in mind, beauty brands in particular need to be very strategic and very analytical about their PPC campaigns. So being smarter with AMS or your sponsored product and headline search ad campaigns on Seller Central come down to One, knowing your margins. So you need to, in order to properly optimize a PPC campaign, you really need to know what you're working with here. And if you're working with a performance marketing agency on on Amazon, they need to know what it is. Or if you're working with an Amazon agency like Bobsled, we need to know your um, sensitivity around margins here so that we can optimize campaigns properly. Uh, The second best practice here, optimizing product pages for conversions. And these are all the things that Jen and I were just talking about the last 15 minutes or so. What can you be doing with your um, images? How are you telling your brand story? How are you um, driving conversions with promotions like coupons and subscribe and save? So that means you're paying more per click with advertising, but you're capturing more sales because um, the offer is more compelling. Um, and finally, the last two best practices, trying to wrap, wrap this up, working against the clock here, learn from history and analyze account trends. So every year, um, things there's a lot of changes on Amazon, particularly with PPC, um, but you still want to be tracking your entire year to see seasonal trends, 
um, correlate bad performance to specific ads or campaigns or products that you were testing over that time. Just being very analytical about what's going on in your account and in your campaign so that you can improve uh, next year. And then um, optimizing individual campaigns, which we will talk about a little bit more on this slide, actually. <laughs> so Q4 tips, um, Jen, quick rapid fire here. As Q4 approaches, what advice do you have for brands in the beauty category? What, what are the must do's that you're talking with your clients about? Um, definitely um, launching thematic campaigns like I was talking about before. It's like PPC and you want to kind of marry that with any kind of coupon promotions and things that you're doing. Make sure that right. make sure your campaigns that you're doing on Amazon are mimicked on any external platform. So if you've got a Shopify site or your own website, you want to make it clear across the board as well as with your social, your newsletters, everything. You want to keep that consistent um, across all platforms. Um, and, you know, like we were saying before, you don't want to get caught with insufficient inventory. Um, mm -hmm. The holidays are, are quick and, and, and fast and you just really want to make sure you're on top of that. Um, right. And it's just, it's crucial. So, um, and then also, you know, one of the things that, I love about the holidays is kind of the strategy to it. Um, so you want to use mm. like seasonal keywords, right? We have that 250 byte limit now on your keywords, but you can definitely make mm. references to gift giving, holiday season, you know, yeah. um, things like that. So mm. um, if you've got, you know, ABC pages and your, your holiday page. So if, if I was Insta naturals, you know, I would be, I would be adding some, some gift ideas or gift terminology on that page mm -hmm. um, and maybe show photos of, of them wrapped as a gift, maybe add a little bit of a um, holiday theme to it, you know, some holly, yeah. so a sprig of something, um, just kind of kind mm -hmm. of make that connection again. Um, and of course, your, your PPC and your advertising adjustments, you want to build out that marketing strategy and build that early and get it implemented with your with your inventory levels in mind. And, you know, the one thing that I also like people to remind themselves of is don't lose your Q4 mentality once the holidays are over. So many people get mm. gift cards um, during the yep. holidays. So your Q4 could actually extend into Q1. So you want to make sure that people see your product and, and, and spend those dollars uh, that you might not have gotten as gifts, but um, on the back end with a gift card. That's a terrific point. And we do see at, at Bobsled coming into our fourth year of doing this, um, we see sales in January really strong for that reason that you mentioned. They're spending their Amazon gift cards for all those un uninventive people that give gift cards over the holidays. God bless them. <laughs> they, it means that we have really strong sales in January as people, um, as people spend those gift cards and maybe return products for what they really want. Uh, oh, one more thing, just to go back to this slide. Um, bundling and gift sets. Oh my God, what a huge opportunity for beauty. And so if we're talking about, you know, these a lot of these products are so naturally suited towards bundling that it's a no-brainer and it also means um, great holiday gifts. So what this means for, for brands, whether you're a seller or vendor, it means that you do have to repackage your products in the bundle. They need to be packaged together. Amazon doesn't do kitting. So you need to create that as a new product in your catalog. New UPC, new ASIN, packaged together, shipped to Amazon, and then it can be purchased as a set. But to Jen's point, this isn't just, you know, you, you don't just have to put together bundles and gift sets for the holidays. We've got Valentine's Day coming up, Mother's Day, birthdays, things like that. People are wanting to buy gift sets and bundles the whole year round. So this is just a good opportunity to, um, to, to drive some sales during the holiday period with those bundles. And, you know, Carrie, I wanted to add, too, one of the things I love, because when I'm out shopping for others, I usually end up spending on myself. So um, <laughs> I like I love bundles that are the same product. So if there's a product that oh, I love. A multi-pack. Yeah, so a multi-pack. So if there's a product that I love and I get a discount on the second one or it's a gift pack, I might give that other one and then I get one. So mm. you, gotta, you, you have to consider the selfish gift giver, which I can be at sometimes. Okay, you heard it here first. 
<laughs> Jen's buying for you. There's a uh, ulterior motive. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, just while we've got a few minutes left here, I want to talk a little bit about this iceberg principle, which is something that we talk a lot about at Bubsled. And that's the idea that there's there is the visible elements of selling on Amazon. Those are things like ads and the promotions and the pictures. And then below the surface of managing an Amazon channel, whether you're a vendor or a seller, there's a whole lot of operational uh, workflows and, and tasks that need to happen as part of that. So we've talked about things like inventory planning and making sure you're not going to be overstocked or sell out. So that requires... Uh, when you're a seller using FBA, a lot of careful forecasting, and that's part of this, you know, operations piece. We want to make sure that we're being charged the correct fees. We want to be handling cases from Amazon, um, and on the brand protection side, like we addressed briefly in the beginning, um, there's the threat of unauthorized sellers, counterfeiters. These are issues that um, beauty brands, in particular, are really sensitive to um so the in in summary this iceberg principle gives you a a little uh sort of a model to think about if you're looking at your amazon channel and this is something that you're responsible for at your company these are all the things that you need to be thinking about that need to work together Um, and as it relates to what we do at bobsled these are the services that we offer in relation to that iceberg working all the way from operations to um, with the fee audits, returns, um, beauty ungating requests, case log monitoring, inventory forecasts with brand protection. That's that whole piece I mentioned earlier. And then, of course, organic marketing that we talked about in a lot of detail in this presentation as well as PPC. So... Um, Thank you for the feedback, Chanel, that you've enjoyed the webinar. I really appreciate that. It's been great to put this together. If you want to learn more about what we do at Bobsled Marketing, you can email me directly. And what we're going to do is send around a replay of the webinar that's going to have no audio issues because we're recording this whole thing natively uh, from our computers Um, we're going to send around the replay we're going to send around a white paper which is going to be updated shortly and and sent out and also just um, just to catch all the questions that we weren't able to address directly on the webinar today so keep an eye out for that um, recap and before you go we've got three minutes left I would really appreciate if you could complete a survey that we have um, put together about this webinar. Like I mentioned at the top of the call, this is a, um, this is the third web, uh, sorry, the second webinar that we've put together. And I wanna make sure that we're we're hitting the mark there. So I'd really appreciate if you could complete that survey. Um, Andrada will send that around. And thank you for attending. Thanks everyone. Thanks Gary. Thanks Jen.